Um, brothers, I'm going to continue in the topic I was going over last week. You know, a stumbling block is set before you. You know, that was the name of the topic. You know, I'm going to continue on that. I'm going to deal with some of the main stumbling blocks that, that we deal with, which is what? Which is our kids, women, and different doctrines. And also, I'm going to touch on friendship. Because that's also a stumbling block for brothers and sisters in the body also. So, before I go into that, I want before I go into that, I want to touch on the um, I want to touch on the coronavirus real quick, you know. So, hey, um, pull up one of them videos on the coronavirus. Corona, the coronavirus. Yo, they named this virus after Corona. <laughs> corona more liquor. You know, I don't know. They might name the other one Heineken virus. <laughs> the Heineken, the Budweiser virus. <laughs> the Corona virus. All right. So uh, let me see. One of them videos. This one of the short ones. Hold on. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Corona. All right. Yes, it on, no, that one did too long. Uh, coronavirus panic spread globally, no. I want some short. Yeah, give me that. That's short, man. Yeah, that's short. Okay. So, who know what the CDC means? Huh? All right, the Center for Disease Control. That's what the C, that's what it stands for. So play the video. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, here, thank you for being here this evening. This afternoon, we learned that we have Oregon's first case of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Oregon's Governor Kate Brown announcing tonight the first presumptive case of uh, coronavirus in the state of Oregon. They're calling it a presumptive case because it has not been yet been confirmed by federal health officials. But the Oregon Health Authority has announced tonight um, that they believe that this person has the coronavirus and that it is a case of community transmission. This is a person who does not have a history of travel to a country where the virus is known to be prevalent. They don't believe this person came into close contact with somebody else who is known to have the virus. And so it's now a matter of trying to figure out how this person got infected. Uh, Oregon health officials say they consider this to be a likely community transmitted case. This would make it the third in the United States. They are investigating this person's contacts. Um, this person is currently in isolation at a local hospital. Uh, we've also just had word that health officials in Oregon say this person um, in Oregon, this patient, has spent time at a, a specific elementary school, the Forest Hills Elementary School in the Lake Oswego School District in Oregon. According to a message sent to the community of that school district, uh, the person is a school district employee, and the school, now, uh, school district now intends to close that Forest Hills Elementary School through early next week now that this case has been reported. Right, now, so in addition to this third case of... Let me get some on, on, on Moab, man. What's going on? Let's see what's going on on that side of the world with Moab. But um, the coronavirus, a lot of people is scared. Everybody is scared concerning the coronavirus. But I'm going to show you all some. Uh, da, 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 globally. All right, you can click on that. Click on that. Just jump. Yeah, click on that. Yeah. No one knows exactly how this coronavirus might take off in different nations around the globe, but experts say there are indicators. When we look at what countries are most vulnerable, it's clear that it's those countries that have uh, the weaker public health systems in place. To his point, compare what's happening in Singapore versus Iran. Despite its ties and close proximity to China, Singapore is reporting far fewer cases than Iran. Experts say the strength of Singapore's healthcare system has allowed it to react quickly. Containing a virus requires early detection, isolation and treatment of sick patients, and tracing contacts who may also be infected. So there's several countries in Africa that don't have that ability to test. There may be cases already, and if you don't have that ability to test, it becomes really hard to respond to it. 
The World Health Organization has identified 13 vulnerable African countries, including the Democratic Republic of Congo and Algeria. Airports on the continent are screening passengers and lab tests are arriving. But some of those nations are dealing with Ebola, measles and other outbreaks. An influx of COVID-19 patients, especially severe cases, could overwhelm hospitals. But experts say the SARS virus did not take hold in Africa and COVID-19 may not either. We've seen a few cases here and there, um, but we're not seeing the widespread transmission that I think we were all concerned would happen. There's also cautious optimism about South America. Scientists don't know if warmer climates play a role, but countries with younger populations will likely see fewer illnesses. Data so far shows COVID-19 is hitting people over 60 hard, and that could take a toll on developed countries. The U.S. right now, I think, is our big concern. And the primary reason why I say that is the debate about how they're able to do uh, diagnostic testing at this point. Unlike in Singapore and here in Canada, the U.S. has been restrictive in who can be tested for COVID-19. Some fear it's missed the first infected patients and may not be able to contain the virus. Ultimately, no one knows how this outbreak will evolve. With a vaccine at least a year away and no proven antivirals yet, citizens and public health care systems worldwide should be prepared for the worst. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, so this is the new epidemic, the new pestilence that's on the earth right now. You understand? Um, what, they, what they said, it's really affecting... It really affecting people that 60, 60 years old and over. Why, why is that? Because when you're 60 years old and over, you got a weak immune system. You know, if you're young, they say your body going to fight off the virus. But if you're up there in age or you suffering from other illnesses, other sicknesses, your body is weak, most likely the, the virus will kill you, the coronavirus. You understand? What that remind you all of? No, 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 no. It remind it remind me of HIV AIDS. You understand? It's the disease that's that was designed to break your immune system down. You got a weak it, it destroyed the white T cells and it break your immune system down where you can your body's no longer to um to fight off sicknesses. You know, that's what HIV AIDS is, where your body can't fight the sickness and is you you does not die from AIDS or HIV. You you die from a sickness, whether it's cancer, whether it's a stroke, uh, whether it's um a cold, whatever. You that's what you die from. You people that HIV positive, they don't die from AIDS or HIV. They die from their body not being able to fight off sicknesses. That's why you see people that got that disease. They got sores coming up on their skin. You know, their body can't heal itself. He can't fight. And they always get a cold. They always get sick. You know? So, I want to show you all something, man. Um, pull up. I send, hey, I send you, um, I send you, I send you something, babe. I want you all to see something. I'm not going to go into this too, too much. But because this is a whole class in itself, you understand. So um, all right. So read that right there. Uh, make it bigger. Okay, that's that's cool. Okay. So biological warfare. All right, so as I said, I ain't going to touch on this too much. This is a whole class of class in itself. You know, um, who could read that for me? I read I that read, for me. I read it to you. Uh, biological warfare, also known as germ warfare, is the use of biological toxin or infectious agents such as bacteria, virus, and fungi with an intent to kill humans, animals, or plants. All right, so read that again. Read it slow. Biological warfare. So we're dealing with biological warfare or biological diseases. All right. It says, keep on reading. 
also known as germ warfare. Germ warfare. Read on. Is the use of biological toxin or infectious agents, such as bacteria. They use bacteria. Viruses. And viruses. Guess what's guess what? What what is um the corona? What it's called the coronavirus, right? The coronavirus. So they use viruses, read on. And fungi. With an intent to kill humans. As a is it in an intent to what? Kill humans. They use it in the intent to kill people. You understand? Now let me tell you all something. <clears throat> a lot of these diseases that you all hear about, a lot of these diseases is biologically made. Like, who remember Ebola two, three years ago? Right? Ebola, when the Ebola virus hit, it was killing a bunch of people in Africa, right? A bunch of people in Africa was getting killed over when, when the Ebola virus hit. And as they said, these countries, these countries, most the only countries that really get affected bad by these viruses, by these biological Weapons that, that they that they make is those countries that got a good healthcare system that could do once somebody get the virus, they gonna quarantine that person and, and try to and um try to try to um wait what it said what they said? Right, and track down the people that got it and try to contain it. But other countries does not have that um capability, most likely third world countries. So the people that them that get affected most by these biological w warfare weapons is the third world countries. And we know who, who live in the third world countries. You know, that's it. That's our people. You understand? You know, in Africa, Ebola, when Ebola hit over there, this one, this Edomite doctor got sick. When he came over here, they gave, what they did? They gave him a cure, right? They gave him a cure and he lived. They say there was no cure for, Ebo for Ebola. And all of a sudden, they had a cure when an Edomite got sick. You know, that's not coincidence. That's to show you that they, they create these, these um, viruses. You understand? They create these bacterias. And they unleash it on the public. You know? You all ever heard about population control? You understand? No population control. The higher up in society, they try to control the population. That's real. You know what I mean? HIV was another method used for population control also. You all understand what I'm saying? You know, so go ahead. Now, I was going to say, um, they were well aware of the coronavirus because if you look on the back of a Lysol can, one of the things that the Lysol kills is the human coronavirus. So they knew what was going on. Right. If y'all look on the back of it, that's all I want to say. Right. So, so, um, so it says um, biological warfare. Which part in the Bible you could read about biological warfare? Or you could read about the person that make bio um, biological warfare. Who could help me? Biological warfare or biological weapons. Who could help me? Yeah. Biological weapons. Um, sure. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 61. No, that says every sickness and disease that God is going to... But there's another scripture. Biological weapons are scripture that shows concerning that. Uh, shalom, Deacon. Most high Christ bless. Brother shalom, Don. shalom. Um, Isaiah 54, 16. That's it right there. A lot of time, a lot of time we use that scripture to say what? A lot of time we use that scripture to talk about nuclear weapons, right? And missiles and so forth. But it's not just talking about that. I'm going to show you all some. Read, read that scripture. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. So a smith is somebody that make weapons, all right? It's talking about a, a smith, somebody that make weapons. But let me switch it to 
um, today. You understand? Read that again. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. So, the smith here, when you're referring to today in this society, the smith here is called a what? A scientist. The smith here is called a scientist. All right? So, God says he created what? I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire. That bloweth the coals in the fire. Read on. And that bringeth forth an instrument. And bringeth forth an instrument. An instrument is what? A weapon. Like, you know, the smith in working in the fire to bring forth an instrument. It might be an axe or a sword or, or, um, or um, give me some more weapons, man. An axe or sword. It could be a cut, eh? a javelin, a spear, you understand? So these weapons, the smith is in the furnace making and working to build. You understand? You know, read on. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And he bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Read on. And I have created the waster to destroy. And what? And I have created the waster to destroy. And the most I say, he have created the waster. What is the waster? The waster is talking about nuclear weapons. The waster is talking about biological weapons, biological warfare. All of these things is the things that the smith, which is the scientists, bring forth. You understand? All these things, all these things is what the smith, which is the scientists, bring forth. All these weapons, weapons of mass destruction. Biological warfare, biological weapons is weapons of mass destruction. Nuclear bomb, weapons of mass destruction. Atom bomb, weapons of mass destruction. So God says he created the smith. The smith is the scientist that create these things. You understand? So from there, I want you to go to... Is there more on that? No, right? No, that's it. All right, from there, I want you to go to... Go to uh, Revelation 18 and 4. So the smith equals scientists. Always remember that I created the smith that blew at the coals in the fire and to bring forth the instrument and so forth. The book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. So an, an, a, another voice from heaven saying what? Come out of her, my people. Come out of who? Come out of Babylon. Come out of America. All right? And who is he telling to come out of her? Read it again. And I have heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. My who? My people. This it says all nations. No, my, he, sa he says my people. Why? Because God people is where? In Babylon. In the great, in, in what? The mystery Babylon the great. The golden city. You understand? God says his people, is, his people is here. How did they get here? In slavery. So God has commanded us to, to do what? Come out of her, my people. That ye be not partakers of her sins. And that you receive not of her plague. And when he said to come out of her, he's not saying to jump in a plane and leave the country. You know, because I remember years ago when I was young in the truth, some brothers used to be pushing that doctrine. Leave America. Leave Babylon. Leave mystery Babylon the great. Go live somewhere else. God, God command us to come out of her. When, when the Lord say come out of her, he's talking about coming, coming out of her, her, her philosophies. Coming out of her democracy, coming out of her teachings. You understand? Coming out of the lies that you've been learned here in Babylon. You know, so read that again. And I've heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. And when it says come out of her, it means it's, it's it mean don't be partaker of her sins. You understand? Because you could go. In Jamaica, and you still partaking in the sins of America. You could go to England, and you still partaking in the sins of America, which is Babylon. 
You could go anywhere on this planet Earth and you still taking part in the sins of Babylon. Read on. And that you receive not of her plagues. And that you what? And that you receive not of her plagues. And that you receive not of her, none, none of her plagues. Now let me tell you all some. Is plagues coming here to Babylon? There is plagues coming, coming, coming on this earth, man. You understand? So God commands us to come out of her that we receive none of her plagues. Terrorist activity. Guess what, brothers and sisters? That's a plague. Nuclear destruction. Guess what? That's a plague. Biological warfare. Guess what? That's a plague. So God commands us to come out of her that, that we not going to be we ain't going to taste none of them plagues that's coming here to Babylon. So from there, I want you to go to Psalms 91 and start at verse 1. This is what this is for those of you all that are worrying about the coronavirus. The book of Psalms, chapter 91 and verse 1. Right. He, that, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Uh, remember, pestilence... Equal plagues, equal biological warfare, or biological weapons. They all are saying the same thing, all right? Plagues, biological weapons, pestilence. All of these, all of these words all mean the same thing, okay? Read on. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you abide in the secret place of the Most High, you're going to abide in where? In the shadow of the Almighty. What's the secret place of the Most High? The secret place of the Most High is the Bible. Because this, this is where the Lord got his secrets. You understand what I'm saying? This is where he got his secrets. Hey, let me get that. The Lord will do nothing. Amos 3 and 7. Amos chapter 3 and verse 6. Yeah, this proved this prove that what the secret place of the Most High is. Read. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be an, shall there be an evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So the Lord will do nothing but reveal his secrets unto the servants unto his servants, the prophets. You understand? That's who we're revealing his secrets to. You understand? So you all, you, all, you all understand, right now, the secrets is being revealed to us. You know? You brothers and sisters that wake up and learning this gospel, learning these scriptures, secrets is being revealed to you all. That one scripture that we just read, Isaiah, um, Isaiah 54 and 16, guess what? That's a secret, man. <laughs> That's a secret that was revealed to you all today. So from there, go back to where you was at and read that again. Psalm chapter 91 and verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, which is what? Which is the scriptures. All right? The scriptures. Read on. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We going to be Biding under the shadow of the Almighty, meaning what? We're going to be protected by the Most High. You understand? Read on. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. So, who is our refuge? The Most High. The CDC is not your refuge. They can't help you. You understand what I'm saying? They can't help you because they are the same ones that, that the people above them is the people that's creating these diseases that's creating these germs and these viruses and putting it out in the public you know read on i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust in god we gonna trust all right that's who you gotta trust in brothers and sisters you gotta trust in the most high that's who you gotta trust in you can't trust in okay um thinking that 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 um the CDC or this government could save you from 
from the things that is coming on this earth. They can't save you. It's only the most high going to save you. How are we going to save you? You got you to gotta stay in his secret place, man. You got to stay in these scriptures. You got to study these scriptures. Apply them to your life. Keep God laws. You know what I mean? He's going to protect you. You know? And if you die, we're going to see you again. You understand? You get a coronavirus, you die, we're going to see you again. Don't cry. No, that's how serious it is, for real. You know, because let me tell you, you brothers and, brothers and sisters something. I know some of you all might be like, but everybody dies. Everybody in here will die soon. Every, every week or every month, we got to deal with a new debt. You know, our sister from New York, may the most high bless her soul, she, she at rest right now. You know, for those of you all, those of you all um, that knew the sister, she been struggling for a while. You know, she had brain issues. You know, she been going through surgery after surgery. And the most I took her from this plane. Right now, she's at rest. You know what I mean? Right now, she's at rest. You brothers understand some. When you die, your spirit, your soul is at rest. It's just like you just sleeping and you getting a nice dream, you know? You know, like in the night when you fall asleep, that's how you is when you die. You know, a lot of time we moan the death and so forth. But once a brother and a sister, they've been doing what's right through their life, and they've been uh, applying God's commandments to their life, guess what? We're going to see them again. All the great people of the past, they died. David, Moses, you know, King Solomon. You know, death is coming to everybody, every last one of us. You know what I mean? It's just what you did on this earth while you was alive. Did you... Did you Fear the Lord and keep his commandments, you know? Because if you did not, guess what? We ain't going to see you again, you know? We're not going to see you again. But those of you brothers and sisters, that's why I tell you, we all got to die sometime. And you don't really get the full grips of a death until you, like, until you get old, until you start getting old. You know, you hit 50, 60, then you're like, okay, I got to start thinking about my health now, you know? <laughs> now you up there in age. Yeah, it's a little late. You're like, damn, you hit 50. Now you start running to the doctor. Like, yo, I got to take, man, my knee be hurting me no one, you know? Really, now you start worrying about your health. You get up there in age. But but um, it's death is coming to all of us in different ways. You know, when you read this, some of us going to die of natural causes. Some of us going to die in accidents. Some of us going to be killed for this word, you know? And that's, that's just how life, that's just what it is. You know what I mean? So you brothers and sisters, don't get surprised. You know, the more somebody's love, the more we going to mourn them. You know what I mean? Because we going to miss that person because that person gone. You're like, damn, man, I miss that brother. So you know you're going to be like, you know, you're going to feel it inside. You feel me? But, but. I, I don't want you all to have the state of mind that when we die or when you die, it's the end of it for you. Because if that, that's when you should be afraid of death. When you don't know what's going to happen when you die. But we know what's going to happen. You understand? The secret place of the Most High show us what's going to happen when we die. You know, so, so you brothers and sisters, keep that in mind. You understand? So read where you was at again. Psalm chapter 91 and verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. No, no. Like every week or every other week, I'm hearing about somebody in the body dying. I'm just, you know, sometimes you all might have known New York, but remember we are, Israel is all over the world. You understand? And we got congregation all over the world, over the state. Every week or every other week, I'm hearing about somebody dying. So that's why I'm telling you all that death also is part of life. You understand? You know, you know, in the world, they got this, this saying, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die. <laughs> but that is, that is, is, that's one thing that's promised to all of us. You know what I mean? That's one thing that's promised to all of us. You understand? So from there, 
Um, oh, let me get that. Seeing that I'm talking about that, the script, when the scripture says, keep my commandments and live, you know what I mean? When it says, keep my commandments and live, right. When it says, keep my commandments and live, you know, um, and when, when the scripture also said, the wages of sin is death, right. When it says, the wages of sin is death, Everybody got to die. So what debt is it talking about? It's not talking about a regular debt. You understand? You're talking about that debt that kill your spirit and your body. You feel me? Remember the, the scripture says, fear him not that could kill the flesh, but him that could kill the, the spirit and the flesh. You feel me? That's the debt. Wages of sin is debt. That's the debt that you don't want to, that you don't want. That's the second debt. You understand? <laughs> the scripture says those that reign in Christ, the second debt had no power over them. You know what I mean? So when the scripture says the wages of sin is debt, it ain't talking about you living this time and you die. It's not talking about that debt. It's talking about the second debt in Revelation. You know, where you don't come back no more. You understand? Where you're going to be tormented in that fire. That debt it's talking about. So let me jump back to where I was at. Go, go to where you was at. Psalm chapter 91 and verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. So the Lord is going to deliver us from the snare of fowlers. Fowlers, a fowler is somebody that's set in a trap to catch birds. Okay, read on. And from the noisome pestilence. And from the what? And from the noisome pestilence. And from the noisome pestilence. Boom! That big noise you hear. You're like, what the hell is it, you know? Nuclear destruction. Read on. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. And under his wings shall you trust. Read on. This truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Read on. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. So you ain't going to be afraid. The scripture says, don't be afraid from the terror by night. Read on. No, for the arrow that flieth by day. And the arrow that flieth by day is speaking about missile. What type of missile? What type of missile is talking about um, ballistic missiles? You understand? Nuclear weapon. Why? Read on. No, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. The pestilence that walketh in darkness is the Ebola, the coronavirus, HIV, AIDS, you know, all these sicknesses that the scientists, all these diseases, these biological diseases that the scientists came up with and, and released in the community, you understand, and released in, on the earth. And believe it or not, we read it early on. Who created the scientists to create these things the most high? You know, read on. No, for the arrow that flieth by day, no, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, no, for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. The destruction that wastes at noonday is talking about the, um, bombs. It's talking about a nuclear bomb. Read on. A thousand shall fall at thy side. Because and what got the capability to make a thousand people fall on one side? As I said, it's talking about weapons. What kind of weapons? Nuclear weapons. Biological weapons. You understand? Those are the things that got the capability to make a thousand people fall on one side. Read on. And ten thousand at their right hand. And ten thousand people fall on your right hand. So the Bible speak about biological warfare. The Bible speak about biological weapons. Which What is biological weapons? Is weapons that is viruses, sicknesses. Cold, you know, you dying of a cold. You can't recover of a cold. You know, you get pneumonia and drop dead. They put out some virus where everybody catching pneumonia. You know? So God will protect you from these things when you see these things is happening. You know, read on. But it shall not come nigh thee. It shall not what? It shall not come nigh thee. So these things is not going to come near you. It's not going to come near you because why? You f you keeping God's commandments. He's going to protect you. He will protect you. You understand? So let the world worry about that coronavirus and all of that. 
oh, this is going to happen. This, the sickness, da, 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 da. You know, let them worry about that stuff, man. You know? We understand that the most I created the scientist that created that, and he created it for a purpose. You know, let God's will be done, whatever his will is with when it comes to that. You know, so from there, um, let me go into the topic. All right, um, I'm going to start with children. Remember, stumbling block that is set before you. Okay, that's that was the topic I was touching on last week. Stumbling blocks that is set before you. First go to Ezekiel 3 and 20. Go to there and read it again. Ezekiel 3 and 20. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. So it says when the Mosai lay a stumbling block before, before that righteous man, he said, he shall die. You understand? When the Lord put that stumbling block before him, he shall die. But what is that stumbling block? What is that stumbling block? That stumbling block could be, it could be anything. You know, that stumbling block could be your wife. That stumbling block could be your kids. That stumbling block could be another doctrine. That stumbling block could be correction. That stumbling block could be anything that, that is put before you. And it says, and it says, when that stumbling block is put before you, you couldn't overcome it. You couldn't deal with it. So now you're going to die. You understand? But it says, when the Lord put a stumbling block before you, how, why does God, what, what does it mean when the Lord put a stumbling block before you? Last week I touched on this. I'm going to touch on it again. What does it mean when it says, the Lord put a stumbling block before you? Go to 1 Kings 22 and 20. This is from last week. When it says, the Lord put a stumbling block before you. First Leviticus 19 and 14 explain a stumbling block. That explain what a stumbling block is, yes. That explain what a stumbling block is. 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 20. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another, and another said on that manner. And there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. So he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. This, this is what this, this, evil, this spirit say. He, he said, I'm going to go forth in the mouth of the prophets, and I'm going to be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. You understand? Read on. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So he said, go forth and do so. Go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. That's why I tell you, brothers, anything that happened, I watch at it as it's of the Lord. Whether it's somebody come lying, like, you know, somebody might come with a lying spirit. Somebody might come and lie on you. Or somebody might do some evil to you. Or some, you know, you're like, why is this happening to me? Why is this hap why is this why is this person doing that to me? You know what I mean? It's an evil spirit is on that person. And sometimes that evil spirit come on that person from the Lord to try you to see how you gonna deal with the matter. You understand? Because some people be in your life, some people come in your life, right? And sometimes you meet people and some people get you on your nerves. You understand? But sometimes it the Lord put that person around you to try you. You know, I remember when I was young in the truth, you know, this brother used to get me on my nerve, man. You know, he used to get me on my nerve. You know, he was like, brother. I was like, yo, man, I don't want you around me. You know, I don't want you working with me no more, man. I can't stand you right now. You get, you provoking me to anger right now. He's, so the brother said, listen. And when he, when he told me that, I know it was God talking to him. You know what I mean? Even though he was dealing with me evil, I learned from the situation. I said, 
them because I like yo. I like man. I don't want you around me, man. I said yo. You just you know because the buddies get under my skin, get me on my nerves. So I told so one. He said, listen. The reason why you, he says, I'm provoking you to anger. The reason why is because that's already in you, an anger spirit and a murder spirit in you. And I and I said, well, when he told me that, I didn't pick up on it right then. I, you know, I said I was like, eh, "F you, man," and I walk away. This is before we grow into what we grow into now. You know, what I mean, this is years ago. So after I sit down and I start thinking, I said, "Damn, that brother was right." You know, but what it is, the Lord used him to 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 show me things that is in me. So now I have to say, you know what? I gotta fix that, man. That dude was that brother was right. So he was coming at me in a negative way. Or in in a in, in in a certain way, but that was to try me. That was for me to see what's inside me and for me to fix it. So sometimes the most I gonna put a, a e sometimes a evil spirit gonna jump on somebody next to you to try you to see where you're to see how you gonna deal with it. Or sometimes the most I want you to see what's in you. You know what I mean? Because sometimes somebody might do something to you, but the way how you react is wrong. You understand? Sometimes some somebody might do something evil towards you, but you react in an evil way that make you evil too. You know what I mean? No, both of you all is evil. That what he did to you was evil, but you you probably did some even more evil by in your response to his evil. You know. So what I'm showing you is sometimes an evil spirit could come on somebody to try you. You know, that evil spirit could come on brothers and sisters inside you. They come to you sideways on some dumb stuff. And now the Lord is trying you to see what you're going to do. You know what I mean? What, what you gonna, how you're going to handle it. And going to be a test. You know, going to be a test. It's either, you know, as I said, if you're spiritual, you're going to sit down and, and meditate and be like, you're going to sit down and think about what, what went on. And you're going to be like, damn, you know what? I shouldn't have did it. I shouldn't have said this. I, 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 you know I was wrong. What the brother did was wrong, but you know what? I'm going to apologize to him because I, I shouldn't have come at him that way. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what it is about growing in this truth, man. The only way you grow in this truth is by going through stuff. You got to go through stuff. You all don't come up in here thinking that, oh, this is the truth. Everything is perfect. La, 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 la. No. No, that's not what this is about. It is... This, in this walk, in this truth, the scripture says you, you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for, for temptation. You're going to be tempted. You're going to go through stuff. You're going to go through stuff amongst each other. You know? You're going to go through stuff. People going to try you. People going to test you. You know? Going to test you to see where your mind is at. And, go, and God want to see how you're going to deal with it. You know? Tell you this. And I tell you, the more, like, I could give you all example of many different ways where the Lord was testing me when I came in here, when I came into the knowledge that I'm Israel. You know, he had this one other brother, man. This brother, man, he just used to get on my nerves. You know, I know some of you all got brothers around you all right now in here that get on your nerves. You know, but this brother won't get on my nerves. You know, in my mind, I said, yo, I'm going to beat him up one of these days. <laughs> This is years ago. This is, as I said, this is years ago. This is when Bishop was training the deacons. This is when we was being trained. You know, but the dude used to get me on my nerves. One time he make a joke with the kids about fish sticks and fish sticks in their mouth. I'm like, yo, that's some gay stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yo. You know, I was, you know like, that's something I'm like, bro, you don't make them kind of jokes with kids, man. You know? But the dude used to always get on my nerves. One time we drive into Bishop House, I'm giving him a ride. You know, I'm listening some 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 um what we in the we from the from the islands we call conscious music like Sizzler, Anthony B. And I'm listening some some reggae music coming back. He like, brother, you shouldn't be listening to that. I'm like, bro, I'm giving you a ride. You know what I mean? Just be <laughs> quiet. <laughs> Just be quiet, man. He said, brother, brother, I'm trying to argue with me. I'm like, yo, this dude, yo. So I'm like, I took it off. Say, you know, for conscience sake. 
you know? So he put on his headphones and started listening 50 cents. I said, this dude. I like this dude. This is the he just tell me about. I'm like, this dude get me. Mm. You know? So some some people come around you to try you. And you be like, mm. You know, like, Lord, like, yo, man, you got to control yourself. And then they talk dumb stuff. You know, some brother just dumb stuff. But brother said, listen, I don't want no wife. I'm like, yo, that don't make no sense. What are you talking about? Are you gay? No, I don't want no wife. He said, woman is too much, too much responsibility. I said, so what you going to do? I make sure I ask him. I said, brother, are you gay? Is something wrong with you? You know, he said, well, he said, no, nah, I just don't want the responsibility of taking care of no woman and stuff like that. I remember, I'll tell you all these years ago, I was a kid. I was in my 20s. I was young in the truth. I'm like, bro, that don't make no sense. I said, so what you do when you horny? He said, I masturbate. <laughs> so I'm like, yo. Okay, you masturbate. When you masturbate and you having something in your mind, some thought is in your mind. I said, I hope you ain't watching no brother's wife in here blusting after them. He said, No, I think of, I think of a tree when I'm masturbating. And I tell you, this no, no, no. I tell you, uh, the brother said he think of a tree when he masturbating. So I'm like, when I said, and I'm like, just do this, you know. I, you stupid as hell, man. You know, so I tell you, some people going to come in your life to try you. You know what I mean? God want to see how you going to deal with that person. Would you deal with them right? Because even though he, I, he get me on my nerve all the time, you know what I mean? I could have deal with him. You know, in my mind, in my, you know, sitting in your mind, you going to beat that dude up. You know what I mean? Like, yo, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, he talking like some reckless stuff. But in but no, you gotta control yourself. Be like, man, this dude just simple. You know what I mean? That's what it is. You're gonna run across simple people inside you. Simple brothers do simple stuff, talk simple stuff. You know what I mean? Always on some simple stuff. And you gotta, you know, sometimes you just gotta just, you know, just learn to control, control your spirit, control sometimes not everything you argue back and forth with somebody with. You know what I mean? Like somebody might say some. A brother might say something, well, you could turn a, it could turn into an argument, you know, but you could just you just be like, you know what, I'm not arguing with this dude. That's some simple stuff, you know? So my point is why I went here is that God sent an evil spirit in the mouth of the prophets, all right? He sent an evil spirit in the mouth of the prophet. And the evil spirit came and there was a lying spirit in, in their mouth. But the reason why this took place, while showing you all, is that could take place amongst us too. And it have taken place amongst us. You understand? Read on. Verse Go back to where you was at and keep on reading. First Kings chapter 22, verse 23. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. So it says, who put a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets? The Lord did it. You understand? The Lord did it. But let me show you all something. Remember it says the Lord put an evil spirit on Saul, right? Remember when Saul wanted to kill David? You know, you all remember that. All right? It says that an evil spirit came on, on, on Saul, on King Saul from the Mosai. But why was that evil spirit able to come on Saul? Why? Why you all think? Why? Let me show you all some. The reason why that evil spirit was able to come on, on, on King Saul is because King Saul... Go to James. Go to James and read James. Because it says God put that spirit on him, but we understand is that evil spirit came on him. and, and we, we This is going to show you why that was able to happen. Go to James 1 and 20. Is that it? Hold on eh? James 1 and 12. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. When he is tried, 
he shall receive the crown of life. Read on. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So let me show you also. It says an evil spirit from God came on Saul, right? Yeah, came on Saul. King Saul, when we, when we read the scripture. And, but the reason why that evil spirit came on Saul is not because God, God put, God, God, um, how to say, God put that spirit on him. You understand? Is because of what was already in Saul. You understand? Keep on reading. He's going to explain that. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. So God can be tempted with evil. Read on. Neither tempteth he any man. Neither tempt he any man. King Saul was, was envious of David. And was jealous of David. That's why that hatred spirit jumped on him. And he end up, and that's why that evil spirit ended up coming on, on King Saul. Because it was already in him. The hatred spirit was already in him. Okay? Read on. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So you can't say that God. God, even though the scripture says God put an evil spirit on, 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 De, on King Saul, you know, there's evil spirits, evil angels. You understand? The only way, what, the only way that evil spirit could have come on Saul is because of, he was drawn away by his own lust and enticed. You understand? By his own lust and enticed. The same thing we just read in, um, in 1 Kings 22 and 20. You remember what we just read? It says that the Lord sent a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. You know, but who did it? It's a lying spirit. Say, I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. You know, that's that tempter. That's Satan. You understand what I'm saying? Now go to Job. Go to Job real quick. Let me show you all something. Go to Job. Nobody could say God made me a homosexual or God made me a thief. No, that's your own lust inside of you. You feel me? That's your own lust in you why you choose and went and did these things. But read that for me. Job 1 and start at verse 6. The book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Because that's what Satan do. Satan is walking up and down in this earth. You know the scripture said that Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Meaning seeking whom he may tempt. You know what I mean? That's Satan's job to come and tempt you. Tempt you with your own lust and your own demon that you're dealing with inside of you. You know? That's what Satan, that's what Satan um job is to do. You know? But did I touch on this last week? Like I as I said, I heard this Christian, I heard this dude was breaking it, breaking down um Genesis, where it says, um, where 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 the judgment was on the snake that what? That he shall be, thus shall he, no, get, get that and read it, the judgment on the serpent. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to show you all something, because I was listening to this dude trying to break that down, and I'm like, oh, man, lead the scriptures for the prophets, the sons of the prophets. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14. Yeah, read that. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. Because, unto the serpent, unto the, that lying spirit. That demon, read on. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the earth, beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now this is the precept for that to explain what the Lord was telling Satan. You know what I mean? This precept, explain it. Go back again and read that again in Job. This is for you Christians. As I said, you all want to learn the scriptures? You all come to the sons of the prophets. We're going to teach it to you all. <laughs> Job chapter 1 and verse 7. Yeah. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So that is what? That's the judgment that was given to the serpent. You understand? To walk up and down in the earth. That's why it says, The dust are the ground you shall eat all the days of thy life. Satan's job is to be on this earth and to tempt this and, and is to be on this earth and to tempt man. That's his job. You know, to be on this earth and to tempt you. You know, that's his job. But there come times where he got to come before the Most High. And he got to report to the Most High. And he going to report to the Most High. And the Most High going to say, yo, you see this, my disciple, this brother right here, or that brother right there, or this sister right there. That's what take place. You know, that's what take place. And the Lord, and Satan be like, nah, you take this away from him. Listen, he going to turn against you. You know, that's why some of you brothers and sisters, you all come amongst us and you all start going through things. All of that is trials, 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 trials. You know, that's Satan attacking you. You know, so from there, go back to where you was at. Where I was at. Okay, go back to James. So when you are tempted, you can't say you are tempted of God or God made me do this or God made, God made me. No, the reason why you are tempted, Satan come and present the opportunity. And guess what? The reason why it says the Lord is because Satan got to report to the Lord. All these evil lying spirits, all of them got to report to the Lord. That's why it says the Lord did it. You know what I mean? But God cannot be tempted with evil. You know, you are tempted when you are drawn away by your own lust and entice. You know, read on. James chapter 1 and verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. Read on. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed. Okay. No, I want you to go. I'm going to deal with, with um, go back to, go back to Ezekiel 3 and 20. And then go to Ezekiel 14 and 1. Sir. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 20. And again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. And I lay a stumbling block before him. You know, when you start getting caught up in iniquity, a stumbling block does be laid before you. Okay, from there, go to Ezekiel 14 and 1. A stumbling block. A stumbling block is, a, is something that's in your way to make you stumble and fall. You know, and you see that a lot of time. As I tell you, um, I'm going to touch on doctrines. That's a stumbling block. Sometimes you hear and you're in the midst of sin, the most I send a stumbling block in the congregation. Somebody come up with some doctrine. You know, um, the Sabbath is on Monday. The earth is flat. You ain't got to teach on the streets no more. The earth is flat. That's a stumbling block. I had to kick this one brother out of D.C. camp for that. You know, brother said, the earth is flat, brother. And all the time he was smoking weed. And get to find out when we put him out, that's when we find out he was smoking weed all the time. You understand? The earth is flat, brother. I'm like, okay. Uh, what scriptures you get to substantiate that? You know, can you show me the scriptures to substantiate that you are heretic? We talked to you once, we talked to you twice. No, you got to go. You understand? You know, when you brothers bring forth these different doctrines in the congregation, we ain't going to be having it. You know, it's different if you don't understand some and you come and ask us a question. But when you bring out a different doctrine or heresies, you got to go. You understand? Period. Because it's something very serious behind different doctrines, man. You know, with different doctrines, that, that right there could destroy people. It could destroy people's faith. It could destroy congregation. That's why the Lord said, listen, after you speak to a heretic once or twice, 
let them go. Get rid of them. No, a heretic after the second admonition reject. Meaning you talk to him once, you talk to him twice, third time he got to go. You know what I mean? You know? Got this one Seamoss brother. Want to argue with me about Seamoss. <laughs> like, Bridget, boy, move from here with your foolishness, man. Like, some things I'm not entertaining it no more. Brother, Seamoss is unlawful. You know? I'm like, why are you studying about CMOS? Why, like, why, who go research CMOS? You know, come on, man. You know, is he, do he got some against Benjamin or some? Because they know we drink the CMOS, it's good for the back. You understand? That's the aphrodisiac, you know, for you brothers that, that want the strong back. You know, aphrodisiac. You know, well, when you go into the scriptures, one of these days I'm going to do a um a class on some aphrodisiac for you brothers. <laughs> some mandrates that you could use. You know what I mean? But sea, seaweed is not unlawful for those of you all that, you know. It's not unlawful. Huh? Yeah, they back in the world. You know what I mean? As I said, when you see people come with these different doctrines and I tell you, stumble is, a stumbling block is laid before people. A lot of brothers and sisters. You know, as I say, a stumbling block could be an issue that arises in the congregation. And just how you deal with it, that could tell what's going to really, where, you know, just how you deal with it <laughs> could define whether you're going to stay in the truth or not. Because you could deal with it wrong and, and go, and um, like what you all see took place the other day amongst, amongst us. You know, but um, go back and read it again. Is equal three? Yeah, listen, you all will entertain foolishness. The scripture says foolish questions avoid. You know, I meet the point right now. I'm not entertaining no foolish questions from nobody. You understand? It's one thing you ask a question in sincerity, but the foolish questions, the dumb foolish questions that gender strife, you know, where, I, where you up here trying to debate me like, no, brother, that seaweed is this and that. I'm like, yo, I'm not going through that stuff, man. You know, if you if you know the truth and you know the Bible, why are you up in here? Go, go somewhere else and do your own thing. You know what I mean? Like, you understand what I'm saying? If you understand so much and you so wise out thou, why are you here? You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, come on. So from there. Ezekiel 3 or Ezekiel 14? Go to Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. These men have set up their idols in their heart. Read on. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. And the stumbling block of their iniquity. Their iniquity is their stumbling block. The iniquity is the stumbling block. The iniquity is whatever is in your is whatever sin that you caught up in that making you stumble, stumble and fall. You understand? Read on. Should I be inquired of, of at all by them? Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God: Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and put and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his faith face. And cometh to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. So the the idol that you guys set up in your heart, the stumbling block, the stumbling block, the idol, it could be anything, anything that you put in front of the Most High. You understand that stumbling block, that stumbling block, stumbling block, or that idol, it could be your kids. You know, it could be your kids. It could be woman. It could be. Um, your friend, you know, it could be sports. You understand? No, as I said, it could be anything. It's anything that you put in front of the most high. That's what that stumbling block is. You know, so if I want to deal with a couple stumbling blocks. This is where I had left off last week. All right? I'm going to deal with kids. You know, go to Sirach 30 and 1. Sirach 30 and 1. 
first stumbling block I'm going to deal with is kids. Kids. You know? The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, and verse 1. He that loveth his son causeth him off to feel the rod. So if you love your, if you love your son, right? You love your, ch- your kids. You're going to what? Cause him off to feel the rod. You're going to cause him often to feel the rod. Meaning what? You're going to discipline your kids. Now, let me tell you all some. Growing up is different than from today. You understand? I, I got to put that disclaimer out there. You know what I mean? When I was young, I used to get my ass whooped. You know, when I hear pups coming up the stairs, I could have hear him coming up the stairs. If it was my day to wash dishes, I used to go in the sink and make sure all the dishes is washed. I used to run in the room, make sure my bed is, is, is made up. Because if my bed is ma- isn't made up, I'm getting my ass whooping. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like certain values that instill in you when you're a little kid, when you grow up, they stick with you. You know what I mean? They teach you responsibility. These are the things that my parents was teaching me at a, as a, young, at a young age. You know, so the fear, the fear first and foremost has come from your parents first before you go to the most high. You know, so when I was young, I was afraid of my, um, of my um, parents. You understand? I was afraid. You know, you ain't do what you say, you get a whooping. You know, but today in this society, if you whoop your kid, your kid might call ACS on you. You know what I mean? That's why I got to put that disclaimer out there. Here in Babylon, you, you, you I discipline your kid. Esau might take your kid away from you. So you brothers and sisters that got evil kids, your kid is evil. Listen, be mindful. I don't want you to go back and say, Deacon Malachi has it to whoop, whoop my kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know I'm locked up, I'm in prison, and they took my kid from me. Use wisdom. Let me show you what the scripture says. Um, uh, wait, when he's young. Uh, okay. Hold on. Yeah. 23. Huh? Jump for verse 12. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 and verse 12. Bow down his neck while he is young. So it says, bow down his neck when he's what? While he is young. When he's 15. While he is young. When, he, when he's 13. While he is young. When he is 17. While he is young. While he is young. That's the time you got to discipline him. Some of you all got 15 year olds. 16 year old, 17, 18 year old, you you wanna you wanna whoop them. Come on. Mm-mm. Don't do that. You know, that's a that child is of you know, they up, they are teenagers now. You know, you talking about get bring the belt for your whooping. <laughs> you know, yo, this dude is going through puberty. He start getting muscles now. He like, yo, dad, what are you doing, dad? You know, and, and you trying to whoop this dude. This dude voice broke, broke all of that. He sung just like you. And you trying to whoop this dude behind. That's why the scripture says what? Bow down his neck while he is young. While he's young. Young meaning the age of understanding. Usually kids get understanding at a different age. Some five, some six, some seven. You know what I mean? But when they are kids, don't wait till... Till they meet 15 and they they on Pornhub and they on um what you call it and the kids on Pornhub <laughs> no you want to whoop they behind like you know you got to do it when they are young you got to make sure your kid is not self will when they are young you got to discipline when they are young so when they get older now they 15, 14 15 the fear is already in them and the respect is there you understand and this is what you brothers have to understand. Don't wait till your kids is, is all up in their teens to, to try to whoop them. 
You know, when I meet, when I was a teenager, they couldn't catch me to whoop me no more. I was out. You know what I mean? Like, go pick the whip and come. I'm like, I ain't coming for no licks. What? You know, <laughs> like, I'm out. You ain't catching me. You know, like, come on. So, you know, it's when they're young, but the fear was already built in in me already. You understand? Because they discipline, the discipline was when I was, when I was a kid, when I was young. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.